Hi everyone, my name is Marinx Pasovic and in this video I will show you how to build different parts of your objects using the builder pattern and also how to make those parts using the fluent method approach with the fluent builder pattern in C Sharp. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports the channel as well. So let's move on with the project. The builder design pattern is a creational design pattern that lets us create an object one step at a time. It's quite common to use this pattern when creating a complex object. By using this pattern, we can create different parts of an object step by step and then connect all the parts together. As you can see from the diagram, we expose only the director class to the client. And this class acts as intermediate between the client and the builder part. Of course, we have a main interface to define the building procedure and the concrete builder classes that build the object. To show how this works, I will write a simple example of creating a stock report for all the products in our store. At this point, I would like to let you know about our products. Currently, we have the Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book and the Blazor WebAssembly course you can use to create client C Sharp apps without using JavaScript. Of course, we are working on new ones, so always check the links in the description below. That's it, let's start with the simplified product class. I will use this class just to store some basic data about a single product. So let's add a string name property here and a double price property. Now, let's move on to the concrete object I will create with the builder pattern. And let's name it product stock report. The stock report object will consist of the header string part, the body string part, and a footer string part. Also, I will override the toString method to have a proper format when printing this object. So, it is quite logical to divide the object building process into these three actions. Now, let's continue with the builder interface to organize the building process. I will name it I product stack report builder. Here, I will create a void build header method member, the void build body member, and the void build footer member. You can see that the concrete builder class that will implement this interface needs to create all the parts of our stock report object, but also has to provide a way to return that object to the client. So let's add another member of the product stock report type named get report. To continue, let's implement our concrete builder class. And I will name it product stock report builder. First, this class must inherit from the main builder interface. Then, let's add two private fields here. The first one will be of the product stock report type, so the object we are building. And let's name it product stock report. The second one will be a private read only field of the I enumerable product type and let's name it products. Also, let's create a constructor to initialize just this collection. Additionally, inside the constructor, I will instantiate the first field with the new instance of the product stack report class. Now I can build different parts. So let's implement the interface. To build the header, I will use the product stack report field called the header part property and simply assign a string message to it. Then for the body, I will first extract the required product information by projecting the result from the products list and extracting only the required information from it. Then let's use the body part property and use the string.join method to apply a new line with information I just extracted. Next, for the footer, 
I will call the footer part property and again assign a simple string here. Lastly, in the get report method, I will create a new product stock report variable and assign it the value of my created report. Then I will reset our object and prepare a new instance to be ready to create another report. For that, I will call the clear method. This is usual behavior, but it's not mandatory. Of course, I need to return my created report. Yes, I need to create the clear method to remove this issue. And this method will simply reset the product stock report object. Now, just to explain, I didn't call this method inside the constructor because semantically I am not clearing anything there. Inside the constructor, I am preparing my object for the first time. But inside the get report method, I have to clear it out. Once the building logic is over, I can start building our object in a client class or even encapsulate the building process from the client class inside the director class. Well, let's go ahead with the director approach. And let's name the class product stock report director. Here, I will inject my main builder interface. So I need a private read only I product stock report builder field named builder. And let's use a constructor to initialize this field. Then I will create a simple builder stock report method. And inside, call each of the builder methods to build my product report. So build header, body, and footer. After I have finished all this work, I can start building our object inside the program class. I will first add a list of products that I'm building the report for. Then let's create a new builder variable and instantiate it with the new product stack report builder class with the products as an argument. Next, I need a director here and create a new director instance with the builder as an argument. Finally, I will build the report and print it down inside the console window. Great. At this point, I can run the app and we can see the result with my created report. So this part is done and let's see how we can slightly modify this pattern to make it more fluent with the Fluent Builder pattern. The Fluent Builder is a small variant of the Builder design pattern, which allows us to chain our Builder calls towards different actions. To start with the Fluent Builder implementation, I will first change the Builder interface. These three void methods must be changed to return the iProductStockReportBuilder type. Next, I have to modify the implementation of the product stock report builder class as well. As the interface defines, all of these builder methods must return a new type now, the i product stock report builder type. Also, each of these methods must have a return statement where I will simply use the this keyword to specify the class type I return. As a result of these modifications, I can chain the calls inside the director class. So instead of the existing code, let's use the builder field and chain the build header method, then the build body method, and finally the build footer method. Now we are using the fluent approach. I can start the application again, and the result is the same. But we use the Fluent interface this time. This looks great. So, in this video, you'll learn how to use and implement a builder design pattern into your project to create complex objects. Furthermore, I've explained our example to use the Fluent interface, which allows us to chain our builder calls together. As the final part of the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.